When we look at girls in the media, we often see thin-bodied figures presented as embodying beauty. But what about those who aren't thin? Nowadays, there are movements aiming to subvert stigmas on body types, including the fat stigma, which stems in pathology, morality, and gender discourses. The term fat is commonly understood as a health threat. But, as with prior studies, here I use the word fat not to mean health complication and to challenge its presumed truth of a negative profiler. In films, while usually fat characters are known to be supporting comic relief, there have been films with fat main characters. Studies discussed how their portrayals have either affirmed or challenged the stigma. In this video, I'm interested in exploring the way these fat bodies are portrayed in films with a message of body acceptance that challenges the fat stigma. I observed two films, namely I Feel Pretty, directed by Abby Cohn and Mark Silverstein, and Imperfect, directed by Ernest Prakasa. I used textual analysis in examining the film's narratives to reveal the body politics portrayed in both films. As the films are set in America and Indonesia respectively, I consider the resolution in contextualizing the films in their cultural settings. Hence, I use Janine Gailey's theory of hyperinvisibility and Susan Bordeaux's feminist body politics to examine to what extent do the films show resistance or affirmation of fat stigmatization. I Feel Pretty and Imperfect are about Renee and Rara who trace the path towards body acceptance. At the start, they don't perceive themselves as adhering to society's standards, which is shown to be the reason behind the body policing. Renee and Rara's experience with the fat stigma involves juxtaposition with a thin ideal throughout the narratives. For the most part, Renee pleases herself as she is hyperconscious of her unideal body. She assumes hyperinvisibility when she accepts how people, including herself, treat others with ideally thin bodies favorably, and also hypervisibility when her body is treated negatively. This shows how the perpetuation of the fat stigma has been so ingrained in her mind that Renee needs magic to surpass that mindset. But what is hyperinvisibility? According to Janine Gailey, it's the paradoxical notion that the fat body is given much attention and not given any at all, which may happen simultaneously. Even after magically waking up with newfound confidence, Renee still assumes hypervisibility as viewers can see her emphasizing that her body is desirable and hyper-invisibility from the way viewers can see how she erased the lived experience of fat females in the workplace. This is because, under magic, she's able to advance her career the way she wasn't able to. Renee's newfound confidence implies that garnering positive responses, which were initially negative, requires a magically infused high level of confidence. While the film shows an extent of ambivalence by referring back to magicless confidence, Renee still has to experience a fantasy in order to get to that point. Therefore, the fantasy narrative both diminishes and disregards the lived experience of discrimination towards fat female bodies. Then we have Rara, juxtaposed at home and the workplace with others that generally meet the thin ideal. At work, Rara becomes hypervisible when her boss sees her weight more than her capabilities, and simultaneously hyper-invisible when her boss doesn't consider her for a promotion because of her appearance, even when she's the most eligible. This pushed her to transform her body for the promotion, which she got in the end, only to later face new conflicts including health complications. As the promotion is only achievable due to bodily transformation, there seems to be a paradoxical message conveyed through Rara's narrative. There is ambivalence by showing how changing her body that way has detrimental effects. However, for a film that aims to break away from ideals, it's ironic that to reach the resolution, Rara's body indeed needs to fit to ideals in order to finally be accepted by society and herself. This brings us next to the body politics portrayed in the films, which show both resistance and normalization. Renee and Rara as main characters symbolize a form of resistance as we become aware that such stigmatization is wrong. However, their portrayals can offer a contrasting understanding. They either stay silent, endure, succumb, turn a blind eye, or, while under magic, ignore discriminative behaviors. Such a depiction normalizes the fat stigma, for it conveys how it's expected for people to treat fat bodies negatively. 
Hence, the value of body acceptance is paradoxically accompanied with notions of how the body is and should expect discrimination. This is aligned with Bordeaux's concept of feminist body politics regarding how the power existing within society classifies identities in a hierarchy. There, the fat body is situated somewhere lower. While able to resist this power, forms of resistance seen in text can provide an illusion of how the bodies are able to correct or accept themselves. Therefore, although the ambivalent tone of both films doesn't delude audiences into thinking that change is needless, it allows for normalization of discriminative behavior towards fat female bodies, as they are expected to persevere enough to police themselves so as to avoid it. This comparison shows that although fat stigmatization occurs in different cultural settings, it's portrayed similarly. This next point notes both films' differences. Narrative-wise, Renee's is a fantasy narrative with no physical transformation, whereas Rara's is a more realistic one involving bodily transformation. The cultural contexts are also prevalent. In I Feel Pretty, the body is more closely related to the self, with American individualism instilled through narrative, character, and context. So as not to generalize, I note that in comparison, this film offers a more individualized portrayal of Renee's struggle with fat stigma and disciplinary practices. As shown by those closest to her, while they accept Renee's body as is, they don't offer a significant stance on dominant ideals that affect Renee's outlook on her body. A shift in attitude and perception of her body comes from herself. With Imperfect, the body is more closely related to Indonesian society. Indonesian collectivism translates into Rara's relationship with her body, which involves interpersonal relationships as well. As before, I note that feelings of dissatisfaction from herself are present, and several characters serve as the counter-narrative voice of the fat stigma. Yet evidently, pressure from society, co-workers, and her boss pushes her to transform physically, and only after then, Rara's attitude towards her body changes. In the end, as seen from Renee and Rara, while recent depictions of fat female bodies attempt to portray forms of resistance, they still perpetuate the fat stigma. With the internet messages of body acceptance, the film's ambivalence conveys paradoxical ideas as it reflects the normalization of the stigma. Applying Gailey's hyper-invisibility and Bordeaux's feminist body politics allows a nuanced analysis of fat female body depictions as it pinpoints similarities and differences in narrative and cultural context. Therefore, this comparative discussion highlights the way fat stigma is a global issue that many women may experience but can differ in their portrayals due to their respective cultures.